Good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to video number two on our series on employment and the employment process. Now, the last video or the first video for this series, we went over a lot of details about um, why Mr. C is teaching this to middle school students. Additionally, we went through the process or we looked at um, ways to um, uh, find current jobs, listings, so on and so forth. And um, we looked at, uh, well, a couple things to consider, such as prioritizing and do you have even a... Um, an opportunity or an ability to work a part-time job and stay focused on what you need to stay focused on, right? So we looked at those prioritizing things. So in today's lesson, we're looking at, okay, if you found a place that's hiring, what do you do when it comes time to, um, you know, apply for the job? What's the process? What's involved? So I've got... Um, two videos that I'm going to show them. I'm just going to play back to back, okay? Um, if you're in class, I'll probably stop them after the first video. But here's a couple of quick things. We're going to look at, in this lesson, right, the paper application and the digital application, all right? Yes, people are still doing, in some businesses and in some cases, paper applications. It really depends on who you uh, apply with, okay? And so that's something to keep in mind, that paper is still used in modern business okay certain businesses choose not to use paper it all depends okay so let's look at a couple of videos about asking for a job application okay and how to fill out a paper application if that's the system that they use all right let's take a quick time out how to ask for a job application a potential employer's assessment of you begins the moment you request an application. Put your best foot forward and make a great first impression by following these suggestions. You will need a professional appearance, a friendly demeanor, a blue or black ink pen, a copy of your resume, and determination. Step 1. Present a professional appearance. Ditch the jeans and flip-flops. The point is to look as if you're ready to start work immediately. Leave your phone in the car. Nothing makes you seem more unprofessional than talking on your cell phone or mindlessly texting. Step 2. Be courteous to the front office staff. The receptionist may inform the hiring managers if you're rude or arrogant. Step 3. Use a polite tone of voice when requesting the application. If the employees are busy, wait patiently and don't complain. Thank them after receiving the application. Step 4. Fill out the application completely with a blue or black ink pen. Use your resume as a blueprint when filling in the spaces. Answer neatly and honestly. Use correct spelling and sign and date the application correctly. Be sure to explain any gaps in your work history. If you were attending school or on leave, make note of it on the application. Step 5. Wait a week after you've submitted your application and then follow up with the company. Call and ask to speak to the hiring manager. Reiterate your interest in the position and ask for an interview. Be polite yet determined. It pays to persevere. Did you know, in 2009, a contest for the best job in the world, serving six months as the caretaker of a tropical island in Australia, drew more than 34,000 applications worldwide. How to fill out a job application. Your job application is your first impression, so make it count. You will need a blue or black pen, and a copy of your resume. Optional, a fact sheet. Step one, use a blue or black pen to fill out the job application. Make sure that your printing is neat and legible. Step two, communicate your education and work history accurately, being sure to explain any gaps. Bring along a fact sheet with work details, contact numbers, addresses, and references to help you fill out the application. Step 3. Be honest at all times when filling out the application. Lies and embellishments are eventually discovered. Step 4. Apply for a specific position, rather than leaving it open-ended. Step 5. Fill out every section of the application, being sure not to leave any empty sections. For sections that do not apply, simply write NA or draw three consecutive dashes. Step 6. Sign and date the application. Step 7. 
Proofread your application before turning it in. Step 8. Submit your application to the hiring manager with a copy of your resume. Did you know? The U.S. unemployment rate hit a 26-year high of 9.6% in August 2009. All right, so there you go. A uh, quick little demonstration on how to properly ask for a job application and um, how to fill out a paper application. Now, as far as paper employment applications, they are preferred by some smaller businesses it really depends on the business okay you see the business might hire out to somebody like the career source like we talked about or to a hiring a hiring agency or they may choose to do things digitally through their own uh, computer systems and servers etc right but paper applications are the uh, the staple of small business and when I say small business of course that's businesses that either don't employ a lot of people or you know they have money is invested into the um, hiring process and and seeking employees out but they still prefer the the paper all right so a couple of quick refreshers here right um, one when you complete a uh, paper application make sure that you use professional ink okay and when I say professional ink I'm not talking pink okay I'm not talking green you want to use blue or black and don't use a sharpie or a crayon or a colored pencil you want to use a pen okay not multicolored okay if I see all the colors of a unicorn on an application and I've been in the in the hiring side of things in other words where I'm making the hiring decisions okay I'm gonna look at the application and go no this person doesn't have the maturity to work for us let's move forward okay and I'm gonna skip that application all right and a lot of the uh, hiring managers that I still talk to still use that same idea. Okay, that includes Chick Fil A, who still uses paper applications. That includes you know, maybe the bowling alley or uh, other uh, uh, businesses as well. All right, follow the directions and only input information as requested. Example: Where it says name, make sure you put your first name and last name there. If it says first, all right, obviously put your first name. Be careful; it doesn't say last. Make sure you put that either above or below that space. Okay, it'll clearly tell you. It'll be inferred by the amount of spaces that are available. All right, make sure you include the city, your address, and so on and so forth. Okay, previous employers, if you have any. If you have, don't. That's fine. As you heard in the video, use NA or a dash. Okay, you could use the three dashes. I prefer the single dash. All right. All right. Use complete information and do not abbreviate. Now, obviously, in the address, you're going to abbreviate ST for street, right? But, um, you know, try not to abbreviate too much, okay? Um, that's where, you know, reasonable. Example, you saw the person writing the video in there 10 slash forward slash HR inferring ten dollars per hour is what they were asking for on their pay rate okay um, but other things you don't want to um, abbreviate such as manager you don't want to put MGR because people don't know what you're talking about when you abbreviate sometimes make it as clean and neat as possible because sometimes people look at the res or at the application and think that as a representation of the work that you produce your work ethic and your particular skill set right now if you're someone who has a resume you want to make sure you include that don't staple it but simply paper clip it okay to the um, application itself okay and of course um, let's see here records you can give out personal information to a reputable business okay because those records are records are kept confidential all right you don't have to worry about somebody taking those and s taking your information and, and and going away with it all right now obviously if somebody's on the street going hey i'm hiring come work for me right well then maybe you want to think twice before filling out an application for somebody who's not in a physical building or you know what have you then again, there are legitimate businesses that are out there. So just be really careful. Use your best judgment on who you give your personal information to. All right. But a job application, usually it's okay. All right. All right. Moving forward. Let's go to the next slide here. You know, why does Mr. C always have problems with going to the next slide on the first slide? I don't know. Okay. Move forward, please. There we go. Thank you. All right. So um, let's see. If you're doing an online application, in other words, a digital application, 
This is still preferred by many bigger businesses, franchises, and other um, individuals, okay? Because sometimes they say, hey, let's just hire out somebody else to keep the information available for us. And there's nothing wrong with that, all right? Information is stored digitally, and it is secure, okay? Uh, they use usually using the cloud of some way, shape, form, or process, right? And it's usually on a separate database, okay? Uh, some businesses will use the credentials from other profiles uh, on uh, other listings sites in other words um, if you go to some businesses if you have say like a career builder profile or a LinkedIn profile you could simply import the information from career builder or LinkedIn and it'll automatically propagate or put itself in those areas cool convenient right but you still want to verify the information is correct in there right you still want to do your diligence your part because remember your application how you put information in is a representation of you okay um, Let's see here. Other businesses will uh, list available employment, right? And uh, post it and require that you key your information in, okay? Th that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You want to make sure that you have a quick and easy sheet that you can pull information and references from and documents and so on and so forth, okay? That you can refer to because you're not probably going to remember all the information off the top of your head, all right? Now, it's a good idea to have a uh, some sort of word processing document available for easy cut and paste or copy and paste that could be on word that could be on docs or something like that because again you probably won't remember everything off the top of your head so it keeps everything kind of organized so say like you start working for maybe it's your third job and you can't remember what your first employer's address was well that's fine you can just simply copy and paste it okay and it's always a good idea to have that especially when it comes time for uh references and we'll talk about what references are here shortly right Again, always attach your digital resume, and then again, uh, records are uh, kept confidential by the hiring party. All right, so that's really important. Okay, they got to keep that confidential. That's part of various uh, federal and state regulations. All right, um, always use an NA for not applicable or uh, for any sections that do not apply to you. Okay, so if you uh, haven't gone to college, okay, and they're asking, you know, hey, where did you go to college? Put NA or that dash, all right? Now, we're asked for personal information. Here's what you'll usually see in personal information, all right? You'll see three different sections. You'll see your basic name, address, contact information, right? You'll see a spot for your social security number. You're going to have to know that, okay? And then you're going to see U.S. work eligibility. And let me explain what these things mean for y'all, all right? Name, address, contact information. That goes without saying. Okay, how can somebody reach you? If you don't know your address, you're going to have to find it out. You have to look it up because that's what they need to know. Okay. When they're going to ask you how long, okay, what that means is not as how, what's the dimensions of the property you live on. What they're asking is how long have you resided there? Okay. Um, so that's important to remember. So if you've lived there for five years, put five years. If you've just moved to town, you've been there for two weeks, put two weeks. And they may ask you, oh, okay, for identification purposes, because they're probably going to check another database to make sure that information is correct to verify information for their safety reasons, right? They may say, okay, what's your previous address if it's under two years, okay? So um, if you don't have a phone number, okay and you don't have your own phone which some of you all may not have your own phone or phone number that's fine make sure you leave a contact for somebody okay hey this calls the house this is the house phone ask for me okay then that's fine that's sufficient if you have to leave say your mother's phone number okay then say hey this is my mother's phone number she's always available she can get a hold of me okay some businesses will say that's fine some people will say well okay we'll look at that later okay now when it comes to using your social security number, you want to be careful on who you give it out to. However, um, because that, that is your ID. That is how people identify you. And they can do a lot of, you know, the wrong person can do a lot of harm to you as an individual with your social security number. Because it's your ID. It's like having, like giving somebody your student number. They have access to all your records and so on and so forth that you have access to. However, on applications, it is okay to give that information out. Okay? Be careful. Now, some people say, hey, I'll give that information to you once you decide, you know, hey, if, um, you, with a job offer, I'll give it to you. And some people will say, sure, that's fine. Okay, that's up to you. All right, but I always highly recommend giving out that social security number. All right, where it says U.S. work eligibility. That means if you were born in the United States or are a U.S. citizen. Most people in here are going to be yes. Okay, most people in my classroom are going to be yes. Okay, if not, you'll need to provide authorization of information as provided by government regulations. In other words, your immigration information, so on and so forth. Okay, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, but for most of us, it's yes. Okay, all right. 
um, where it asks us these next three sections, all right? You have hours of availability, position applied for, and your education. All right, here's what this all means, okay? Hours of availability. When are you available to work? Are you going to school? Look, if, if a business is hiring somebody who goes to school, they understand the basic hours that they're available, all right? They may even say part-time after school in their um, uh, advertising um, uh, ad, uh, ad, or want ad, okay? And that's fine, okay? But you want to be specific, yet be flexible, okay? Um, here's the thing. If you're not flexible and you say, no, I can only work between these hours and that's it, then they may say, mm, maybe we need to find somebody else. No, I'm not available to work on Saturdays or Sundays. I want my weekends off. Then they may say, mm, well, okay, all right? So, yeah, be specific, yet be flexible. Document it, all right? Again, employers understand, understand school hours and other obligations. So if you're involved in sports, if you're involved in band, if you're involved in student government, they get it, all right? Uh, they know what they're looking for, okay? Uh, position applied for, okay? Be specific. Don't just list any. Okay, you want to be specific. Why? Because that shows that you are interested in something and says, hey, I know that I am better suited to work for this. Because if you put any, they can say, oh, you want to be the manager, huh? Yeah, that's what's available. Well, what makes you qualified to do that? Well, um, uh, you know, there, you don't want to be in that position. Okay, so uh, don't put any available or all. Okay, and, you know, some managers will see all and like, oh, so you're interested in my job, are you? Hmm. Right? Yeah, I don't want to be that guy, all right? Or that person. All right, education, be specific. If you haven't earned your high school diploma yet, your expected graduation date is in 2024, well, then put expected graduation 2024. They get it, okay? Um, look up information you don't readily know. In other words, if you don't know the address for the school, look it up. Have that planning sheet available for you, right? Or have that digital document available. And then use NA where needed or applicable. All right, if you see a spot that says GED, GED means General Education Development, or general education diploma, all right? This is equivocal to a high school diploma. However, you usually want to mark high school diploma if that's an option, okay? Don't mark GED. That basically means that something else came up while you were in high school, and, you know, you may or may not have graduated with the rest of your classmates, okay? So that's fine, okay? But, and there's nothing wrong if you did, okay? Because some people out there get into weird situations with their lives and so on and so forth. I'm not condemning that or saying that's a good thing, all right? I have nothing like that. However... Um, you know, just that's what employers are looking for, right? Just understand that's what employers are looking for. All right, uh, let's see here. References, employment background and history and extra activities. All right, here's the thing. References are somebody that can attest to your character, your person, so on and so forth, all right? Most applications do not allow people or persons who are related to you, all right? So your uncle, nope. Your mom, nope. Your dad, nope. Your brother, nope. All right. Now, here's a few things to consider then if you're going to list references that will be willing to say, hey, you're, you know, you're say who you are and, you know, can attest to who you are and how you act, so on and so forth, right? You can list parents of friends, okay? Parents of friends. Peers, in other words, you know, classmates, so on and so forth, right? That is perfectly fine. That is perfectly acceptable. Other good resources are adults from uh, or people from uh, various church organizations or social activities, okay? Or maybe former teachers and coaches and other older acquaintances, right? You could message and reach out to them, but don't just leave a reference for them, or just don't don't leave it on the application without telling them, hey, you know. Is it all right if I leave you for a reference? Okay, because they may say yes or no. And then so you want to make sure that they, you know, basically think of you as a good person and are expecting a call, right? Now, why wouldn't you want to list family members? Well, because your family members are always going to tell the person who is calling, oh, yes, they're a marvelous person, right? And, and that's fine. You may be a marvelous person, right? But they're going to tell you, no, we need to list somebody who's not related to you. Okay, so just be aware of that. All right, so you want to think long and hard about those. All right, and don't just put F my cousin. Okay, well, that's cool. All right, but unless they're, you know, your cousin who's like long, long distant. Okay, don't put my cousin, put friend or acquaintance. Additionally, one last thing. Okay, this is going to be tough. Don't leave a reference for a minor. Okay, let me repeat that. Don't leave a reference for a minor, okay? In other words, if you're 16 
looking for your first job, don't list 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds. List somebody who's 18 or older. Okay. That's really, really important. All right. And um, yeah, it's courtesy. All right. It's courteous to make the individuals aware that they were used as references. I said that before. All right. So your employment background in history includes your uh, previous company's name, previous company's address, supervisor's name, contact information, uh, what they were paid, how long you worked there. That's what tenure means is how long you worked for, right? If it's your first job, then just simply mark N-A. They'll get it, all right? And then be honest, all right? Don't over embellish things, okay? Look, if you work somewhere and you clean and wipe and mop the floors, then just put janitor or floor mopper or um, you know something that you actually did. Okay, don't put maintenance engineer because you were not in maintenance engineering. Okay, um, so yeah, be honest. Okay, and if you made ten dollars an hour, put ten dollars an hour. Okay, if you made minimum wage, put minimum wage. Don't tell them you made more than what you did. All right, don't glorify the spot. Okay, extra activities. This is especially useful if you're joining workforce for the first time. Include all extra activities or volunteer work. Okay. Um, or include some additional side jobs that you might have done, working for family, so on and so forth. That goes under the extra activities. Your previous employers, if you earned an allowance, allowance and worked on the farm and it was your uncle's farm, all right, unless you were considered a farm hand and he had you on payroll, don't list it. List it in the extra activities, okay? I hope that helps you out. All right. A couple last things here, and then I'm going to wrap this thing up. Uh, there's some other questions that you might see on here okay um, on the application um, one of the questions will be have you ever been convicted of a crime look understand that background checks are going to be con uh, conducted all right um, and notice it's the word convicted not arrested I've had people who have employed with been employed with me who've been arrested for something they were proven innocent okay and they were cleared of charges that's fine okay whatever it is all right but notice convicted means that they actually were found guilty okay uh driver's information okay they're going to find out hey how are you going to get to work all right if you're relying on parents put you know parents driving own car okay whatever you need to put there again be honest they'll figure it out because if you start having to rely on you know somebody aunt or uncle right and aunt and uncle are constantly running late but you on the application put hey i have my own car and have reliable transportation and you're showing up to work late the employer is going to be like mm, why did you tell us a fib okay so yeah and they may terminate that position okay um let's see here hard skills some applications include areas to indicate your hard skills okay hard skills are the things that you could physically perform like uh type 50 words per minute you know those kinds of things again be honest be proficient can you use an adding machine an adding machine is not a calculator okay that's something different okay um those sort of uh things if you're an experienced welder or you're certified in welding that would be something you would put there any kind of additional certifications skills so on and so forth all right um, again, be aware of any areas indicate as office use, staff only, human resources only, that sort of thing, right? And then you'll also see, may we contact your present employer? Absolutely acceptable if your employer knows that you're looking for additional work, okay? And that's fine, but be cautious, all right? Be cautious on this one and inform the interviewer accordingly if you're still looking, if you're still working for somebody, but you're looking for other opportunities and you don't want the other employer to know about it. And that's fine. That happens out there in the business world and, and happens more than you think. So, you know, it's part of the gig. All right. So that gets me to part two of this information here. And you'll see here uh, that I got a couple different questions for y'all. And, um, Hopefully, I have given you the right information. Well, I've given you the right information, the information you need to fill these questions out for my class. So, good luck, and uh, catch me in video number three.